everyone and welcome back to my channel True Crime and Trials and today it's the continuing trial of Robert Durst and it's day three and finally the last bit of the prosecution's opening statement. So we'll get straight into it and he starts by saying that when Bob was arrested there was a note notebook found in his car and on one of the pages um, it was written what Dee Dee is doing to me puts me in the same place as what Kathy did to me now the prosecution say that Dee Dee is Douglas Durst they now replay the phone call between Bob and his wife when he was in prison waiting to be extradited and they actually talk about Douglas which then connects the note to this conversation. The prosecution say that Bob's plan to kill his brother Douglas had been screwed up and in a further phone call with his wife he referred to something called Igoring. Now Igor was the name of Bob's dog and in the movie All Good Things it was depicted that he killed his dog but the evidence will actually show that he loved his dog and that's one of the things that bothered him in the movie um, because he would never kill his dogs and again the prosecution say you know it wasn't the fact that in the movie he was depicted as being the murderer of three people he was actually bothered that he was depicted as being someone that would kill his own dog years later De, um, Bob denied having this conversation with his wife about egoring his brother um, he doesn't know anything about it and again he doesn't remember what he said and who he said it to. In 2013 detectives and the district attorney went through the evidence that had been recovered from Susan's residence a month after her murder and they came across an envelope which when compared to the cadaver and the cerebral envelopes they looked the same. I mean you can see this you know the writing is exactly the same. They then retain two renowned forensic document examiners um, to compare Bob's writing in the cadaver note and the envelope and this information was not revealed to Bob. The examiners concluded that Bob wrote the cadaver note. I mean, it's plainly obvious to see. In 2015, Bob and his lawyer were informed that the documentary had been sold and would be airing on HBO. On the 8th of February 2015, the first episode of The Jinx was aired. The Jinx was heavily edited and the jury will not see this documentary. When it came to the fifth episode, Bob became aware that Cerub, this is the um, son of Susan Berman, had been cooperating with the producer, producers because Bob watched this episode live and as soon as it had, it had finished he called Cerub and he was furious because Cerub had given the filmmakers the letter. On 11th of March detectives got an arrest warrant for Bob for Susan's murder. On the 14th of March 2015 FBI and investigators determined that Bob was making phone calls from a payphone in New Orleans. Um, and he had checked into a hotel under the name Everett Ward and then he was subsequently arrested. Everett Ward is the name of a person in Galveston that he met by chance in the hardware store where he bought the cleaning products from. Law enforcement searched the hotel room that Bob stayed in in New Orleans and they found a fake ID card with the name Everett Ward on it. Bob's real passport, a map of Florida and Cuba, $44,631 in cash, an expensive lifelike latex mask and a loaded Smith & Wesson gun. Bob then had a police interview the next day. He was given a blanket and some coffee. He was also read his Miranda rights but the prosecution say the interview was that relaxed that Bob forgot who he was talking to and why he was actually there. Um, so he said a lot of damaging things in that interview. This interview was completely voluntary and Bob could have ended it at any time. The interview lasted nearly three hours and the prosecution say that Bob makes what amounts to a confession to Susan's murder. 
Now, whether this is planting seeds in the jury's head so they're listening out for specific things when they hear, hear the entire interview, I don't know. Um, they play a clip from the interview and the prosecution say that Bob seemed reluctant to talk about Susan, although he would talk about Morris and Cathy, he wouldn't talk about Susan. Um, and Bob also says that if he had known law enforcement were looking at this case, he would have been in Cuba. And evidence will show that before Bob was arrested, he was in fact getting ready to go out of the country. In the interview, Bob is asked if he had murdered Cathy, would he tell them? He said no. He was also asked the same about Susan and he again says no. He also says he loves dogs more than people. A statement is made to Bob in the interview that he doesn't kill because he enjoys it and he said if you back me into a corner I will kill you which is what a detective had said to him in Texas and he didn't say it didn't apply to him, he didn't correct them. Bob also says in the interview when confronted with the cadaver note that whoever wrote it was involved in Susan's death. Again, shooting himself in the foot because he's forgetting everything he's saying. Um, the prosecution say that Bob loves to talk about Bob and when he does, he makes mistakes. At the end of the police interview, the prosecution say that Bob in essence confessed to Cathy and Susan's murders by admitting that he had details that he had not yet provided. The next day, on the 16th of March, the DA's office filed special circumstances murder charges against Bob. With Bob in custody, the investigation continued and the first person detective spoke to was Susan's friend, Nick Chavin. Now, it wasn't easy for them to get hold of Nick. They tried numerous times and he never, he wouldn't return their phone calls. But eventually, on the 6th of April 2015, Nick actually called them back. He didn't want to talk because Bob was his friend and he was very conflicted with regards to his loyalty to his friends. Nick was asked if Bob had told him he killed Susan and he said he didn't want to answer that. Nick was asked if he'd ever asked Bob if he'd killed Cathy and Nick again did not want to answer that either. He was continually asked to tell them what he knew but Nick made it clear he just wasn't ready to do that yet. Nick had said he needed more time and he would tell them what he knew another day. Nick was called again on the, the next day the 7th of April and he tells them that he'd had dinner um, with Bob and that he want, Bob wanted to go to dinner with Nick um, to tell Nick what happened to Cathy and Susan. Nick was then asked if Bob confessed and Nick told them he didn't have to. He knew when they called him the day before. Law enforcement, law enforcement contacted Nick numerous times in an effort to get him to talk about what he knew but he still wouldn't talk. On the 23rd of July 2015, he tried, Nick tried to go back on the things that he'd said, like saying when he was asked if Bob confessed to Cathy's and Susan's murders, and he replied Bob didn't have to. He tried to go back on that and take it back, saying he didn't mean what he said that day. They then move on to um, a couple called Stuart and Emily Altman, who are two of Bob's oldest friends, and they all went to high school together. And Stuart Altman is an experienced criminal defense attorney in New York. Emily was called to testify on the 25th of July, 2017. Um, and she actually tried to challenge her subpoena because she didn't want to testify. Um, but she was un unsuccessful and she reluctantly took the stand. She was accompanied by two attorneys that were paid for by Bob and it comes out that Bob was in fact godfather to her son. During her testimony she claimed lack of memory even with the very simplest of questions. During her testimony she was asked whether Bob had ever told her where he had been at the time of Susan's murder. Now, bearing in mind, Bob had always denied that he was anywhere near Los Angeles at the time of Susan's murder, let alone being in Beverly Hills. Um, she answered that 
he told her she was in California, but she didn't know any specific details. She then revealed um, that he was in fact in Los Angeles in December of 2000. Emily wasn't aware Bob had ever admitted to that fact, had never com admitted to that fact. She didn't know that he denied being in LA, so she'd actually told the court that he was, he told her that he was in LA. He had actually told um, Emily that he was staying at the Beverly Hilton at the time of Susan's murder, um, but she hadn't previously informed law enforcement because she didn't think it was of in any importance. Hmm. Now you can see, not just from what the prosecution say, but you can tell by her answers that she's desperately trying to protect Bob. The next day during Emily's testimony, she suddenly provided an alternative explanation for Bob's admission and said that it might have been her husband that told her Bob was in Beverly Hills and staying at the Beverly Hilton. So, the plot thickens with this because one month later, Emily's husband Stuart testified. He also tried to um, avoid having to testify. He confessed that he had talked to Emily about her testimony while she was still on the witness stand. Um, and this happened the night before she changed her version of events when she said Bob hadn't actually told her that he was in LA and staying at the Beverly Hilton. In fact, it was her husband that told her. So now it comes to light that Stuart had coached her and told her no change it basically. Stuart um, also said that Emily had told him that she thought what she had said would be damaging to Bob's case. This was all during while she was under oath and still on the witness stand. Stuart on the stand said that he absolutely did not tell Emily that Bob was in Beverly Hills at the time of Susan's murder. So Bob had actually told um, Emily. Back in on the 12th of June 2015 while Bob was in custody after his arrest in New Orleans Stuart talked to Bob and specifically where Bob was at the time of Susan's murder and Bob basically said that he was still trying to decide where he was. We then go back to Nick Chavin's testimony and he eventually reve revealed what happened after the dinner that he had with Bob and he said Bob told him about Susan and he said I had to it was her or me I had no choice but Bob wouldn't say anything about Kathy they end um, this um, opening statement with Bob Durst is a person that will take care of and protect Bob Durst now that's certainly what's being portrayed in this opening statement by the prosecution so it's going to be interesting where the defence is going to go. So hopefully that starts tomorrow and hopefully it will end tomorrow and we don't have another two, three days of opening statements. So until then, bye for now. Mm -hmm.